Hi, I'm Suki One, and welcome to Shan Ancestors. To learn how to follow up on our last video when we were looking at how we coordinate our primary breaches to our Yutikuma on interception. So today I'd like to focus on our Yutikuma. When we look at this type of uh, stance here, it's quite unusual and quite distinctive in the sense that we have the double adduction of the knees. And it's a, compared to the traditional stance, it's quite a lot narrower and more upright. So I can only presume from the founders that they wanted to design a stance which was more dynamically efficient in terms of mobility and maneuverability. So if we look at how we interpret this particular stance itself, so we just look to, look to show us um, now from this stance here we isolated four key references. So if we start the first one where we have the dropping off down from the knees, second one is here we have the pivoting from the heels and then onto the balls of the feet. And thirdly we have the Reduction of the knees and finally the alignment. Thank you. So, with the alignment, we've already covered that in the previous video. So, what we do is that we look at the first three key references here. So, if we look at the first key reference, what we have is that we have the sinking into the ground from the, for the root. So, without this sinking action, there is no root in our stance. So, the whole process of rooting is dependent on us actually sinking down. So, when we look at this, and let's look at firstly, the traditional model of routine. So what we have is that if Luke was to uh, grab him, but before that, let's just look at the expression first. So what we have is that we have an expression known as sink, swallow, rise, spit. So if Luke was to grab him here, what would happen is that I will sink my root because I want to take the energy that's coming from my bridge into my root here. So if he pushes harder, I'm able to hold the position because I'm swallowing the energy down from here. Now, if I just stay here, my hip was actually tilted. What I could do, because I'm pushing, I can just tilt and I can expel. Uh, similarly, if we do uh, a, di a slightly different approach when it comes to the same thing, pushing from here, I've got starts from here. What's happening is that, again, because my body's turned, and I'm, I can create torque from my body here. So when he pushes harder, what I'm able to do, I'm able to straighten up and then just uncoil and I can express the swallow and spit that way. Now, but in terms of the system of Wing Chun, I don't believe that the Wing Chun system would have used this model of swallow and spit because if we look at the system itself and the Wing Chun system, it's more likely that they would have used a system of deflection and angulation rather than one of absorption. So if I just explain, so what happens is that if Luke was to do the same thing, so like in this position here, now, instead we're sinking, but the reason is we have to sink, but we do not have to rise from the stance itself or the root itself. Now, the rise actually comes from the bridge, in this case, the tensor. So what we've got here instead, we have a simultaneous sink and rise, but the rise is done from the bridge. So it continues to press hard. What happens is that I'm able to float the position because we have a simultaneous sink and rise. And this is what we call yin yang separation. So, using the understanding of yin yang separation, what we're able to do is that we're now able to simultaneously deal with the energy coming into us. Now, why this is important is because if you do the same thing again, and it's pushing down here, is that when it's pushing down from here, because my hip is not committed, it's not actually tilted upwards, if you push harder, I'm now able just to walk around the person. Now, this brings us to very important and prominent Kung Kun in the Wing Chun system. Loi Lao Hui Song La Sao Jit Tong. So what happens is that when the person's attacking, we have to have a means whereby we're able to retain the, the person here and to escort. So what happens, I've given a, another example, if Luke was to grab me around the head, the business we have here is that now I'm able, even if he was to push his left arm into me here, because energy is coming up from my feet and it's reaction force coming up, I'm actually now using the system of deflection rather than absorption. So he pushes me to the other hand, again, I'm able to deal with this. So if we look at the system Loi Lo Hoson Lasso Jitong, when we're intercepting, the whole point of us learning Chi Sao is an gong, i.e. when we're trying to close down center, the whole point of having Chi Sao so we can stick with the person. But if we use the more traditional one where, if, where we're expelling the person, then it doesn't really fit in to the Wing Chun model. It's not that we can't throw the person away, it's just that uh, primarily we do Chi Sao so we can actually stick with the person. Now, if we look at the move on to the next part of the 
of the um, Yichikuma, what we have is that we have the opening of the stance from the heel into the balls of the feet. So what happens is that we won't cover the heel at this video here, here. We, we do it in a second video. What we do is that now we're looking at the balls of the feet. So what happens is that if we're pushing down into the balls of the feet here, we're able to create torque from the knee to the feet. So what effect we have, we have a double spring. So we're able to actually move and accelerate quite easily. So if we go back to the initial thing where we've got an interception. Now, if we look at the, the way that the bridges move. So, for example, in the first bridging sequence, what we have is that we have the structure of the Wu expressing the Gan, the downward sweep from the Gan. Then following from that, we have the double structure of the Tan making an upward sweep, and there's the rise. So what's happening from here is that we can either use the Wu or we can use the Tan in the deception. So, for example, if um, Luke was to throw me an attack and I was to intercept with the Wu, what would happen from this position here, now I'm able now to get reaction force from both my feet here so that if he wants to push into me, I'm now able to move plus the fact that I'm able to control my position so I can escort his position from here. So it's the same thing that happened before when he grabbed me. So if he was to throw the other hand, what would happen from the tan, I'm now able to get to a position where I can escort him. But when we look at the Ichiku myself, because we're spring loaded, if we look at the last bit of the Kunku, last object, top, what will happen is that if he was to throw an attack with me here and he pull it back after I got contact, what happens is it's easy for me to follow him in. But if, I, but if I was using a sliding route to do exactly the same thing, it's not hard for me because I'm trying to stay rooted when I'm coming in. So, thank you. So, if we look at the system of Wing Chun, the Ichikuma is there to support the physical realities of Loi Lo Ho Song, La Song Jit Tong. Thank you. And in our next video, we'll be looking at how we use the spiral flow to create the spiral framework for, or the structural framework for our Pun Song.